Everyone knows the famous and busy shrines of Kyoto, or maybe even the narrow, traditional streets of Takayama. But one quaint Japanese town that doesn't get as much attention is Gujo Hachiman. Located in the middle of Japan's main island, this castle town is famous for its incredibly clean waterways and World Heritage listed dance festival. So we have arrived at this really cute traditional town. We've actually already been here a couple hours just walking around. We've dipped our feet into the river. There's heaps of fishermen out today as well. That's really lovely. We also went to a very nice traditional cafe. On a scale of one to ten, how relaxed are you? But say it softly because it's so quiet. One hundred and ten. And yeah, we live in Tokyo, so we don't actually normally do trips this far away from Tokyo because uh, Gujo Hachiman is halfway between Tokyo and Osaka. But now that summer is over and it's a little cooler, we're finally testing out being in our van and working on a weekday because we both work full time. So we were able to come a little bit further away from Tokyo. We'll show you more about that later. But first, let's go and explore the town a little bit more. We've got a dance festival tonight. We've got some more delicious food to eat. Let's go. Walking around the town, we soon realized Gujo Hachiman was the perfect spot to soak up traditional Japanese vibes. It wasn't super crowded, and even though there weren't many foreign tourists, it surprisingly had great English support. One of the most interesting things we found out was, you know those plastic food replicas displayed in restaurant windows? Well, Gujo Hachiman was the town that started it all. It was starting to get late though, and to prepare for the big dance event, we needed to do some carb loading. The ramen? Ramen. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, I, we haven't had the uh, the really thin noodles very much, but it just was really delicious. And we kind of only went to that place because we were walking down the street and we could smell it from outside. It was so good. As the sun set, we started to see more and more people in Yukata, and the excitement set in. After enjoying a quick musical performance, it was time for the main event. Dance festivals are a typical part of Japan's summer festival season, happening all over the country. What's special about Gujo Hachiman's is that it's been going for 400 years, and it's not held on just one night, but 31 over the summer from July to September. During the biggest nights, People are dancing in the streets until 4am in the morning. Because of all of this, recently, it's been added to the UNESCO list for its significant cultural heritage. So after watching for a bit, we decided to try and give it a go. There's 10 different dances, some slow and some quite energetic. All of them move in a sideways direction, so you end up moving along the street as you go. We started all the way up there. We made it back to the car and all oh, laughter is so good. <laughs> yeah, it felt pretty good to be able to hop into the line. And even though you feel like a bit of an idiot, kind of not getting the moves right. Everyone around you isn't getting it right either. Like, yeah, let's be real. There's some good people and there's some not so good people, including us. <laughs> but they're fun. They're like dance moves that you don't do. But it's like the Japanese version oh, of look like- look at your boy, look at you there's like, It's like the Japanese version of the nut bush, but there's like nine different versions. It's pretty nuts. All right, time to go to the rest stop. Let's sleep. Okay, as you can see, we're back in the van now. I'm talking a little bit quietly because uh, it's what 10:30 p.m. now, and there's so many people in the rest stop around us. It seems to be the place to be tonight. People camping, people just like cars wide open, just letting the breeze in. It's very nice. But anyways, we danced so much until so late that the onsen here is already closed, and we're so sweaty from dancing. So we're just gonna be getting. Uh, Getting clean with some body sheets. Here they are, here, where has got them. We've got these, um, you know, they're not a total replacement for a shower, but if you're in desperate times, you can get by. 
desperate measures. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see you bright and early in the morning for some castle spotting, just for some great times. See you then. Bye. It's a new day, a new time to explore. Roy's already got the umbrella out. Look how cute he is. <laughs> this morning we've come back to this laneway in the middle of the town called Yanaka Laneway, I believe. And it's quite beautiful. Yesterday there was lots of kids playing in it um, because this town is really well renowned for its amazing waterways, really clean. It prides itself on having clean water. So you can see obviously all the fishermen um, fishing, catching lots of fish, but you can see people playing in the water. You can see uh, koi or carp just swimming in like the gutters on the side. So yeah, it's really quite beautiful. And that's why they call this town, it's the town of dance and water. It is incredible that that castle was built 400 years ago. I can see back in the day it was probably a good defensive strategy to be able to see out through the entire valley, but these days it actually just makes a fantastic viewpoint. You get these 360 panoramic views. Now we've just driven two hours to the town over called Kisol, where we're actually going to be staying the night, and then tomorrow we're going to be experimenting working out of the van. Tokyo is good and all for like all those opportunities and the fun lifestyle, but actually Amy and I are from the same small countryside town in Australia. So we've kind of got that slow pace at heart. You know what I mean? So hopefully tomorrow's work experiment goes well and we'll just be working away, enjoying this beautiful slow paced countryside life. Monday morning, we're just sitting here with um, some breakfast, getting ready before we start work for the day. And there's mountains and rice fields next to us, so it's very beautiful. Hopefully it all goes well. Yeah, we've got our portable hotspot here. Uh, we've done speed tests. We're connected to 5G internet, which is more than plenty to be able to do video calls for our work. I'm a software engineer, so I've got daily stand-up video calls to attend. And I work as a video producer at a tourism media company in Japan. So I'll just be editing videos, also doing some, you know, calls with the team. Fingers crossed, everything goes well. <laughs> so, we had a successful morning. The internet held up. Yes, it did. And now we're just having lunch. We grab this from the supermarket because it's quick and it's cheaper than the kombini um, and we were able to also get some driving a little bit of driving back to tokyo done as well this is our lunch for today all this maybe for what 12 dollars yeah pretty good eh? <laughs> yeah pretty good all right let's dig in yep now it's Amy's turn. She has a meeting in the afternoon, a pretty important meeting where we're going to need some solid internet speeds and oh we're not getting it here. So basically we just got, we got our little internet box and we're just like driving around to like different places because there's supposed to be 5G here according to the service map, but we just can't find it. So we just, they lied to us. They lied. We're just going to keep driving until we find it. Let's go and we're in a golf course now here is the next testing spot <laughs> brilliant talk you didn't see that how is it why now it's 25 it's crazy like just there was 120 down yeah i guess it's because we're in amongst these trees I'm not gonna cut the mustard next uh so the last place we've got is 30 down, 4 up. 6 up. 6 up. I think that's kind of manageable for video calls. So this is the spot. 
back to work. Let's get working. Let's go. Yeah, so um, it was a bit of a success, I would say. I mean, it was a little bit hot sometime during the day because we were kind of too pedantic about our internet.、Uh, and then we did have a little kerfuffle about making sure that we got some 5G, but that was only because we had so many video meetings today. And also, turns out the battery is totally fine. We barely used any. But overall, success. And hopefully, we can get out to even more splendid places. In the Japanese countryside. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.